Hey everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. Um, my name is Susan. I am also known as Stampin' Sue Creates. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up, but I am also a machine embroider enthusiast. So I want to welcome you and thanks for stopping by. If you haven't been a subscriber yet, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and ring that bell right next to it. And you will then be notified every time I upload a new video. So I haven't done a video for quite a while on machine embroidering. So um, I hope this is gonna come out okay. I apologize up front if the camera falls over or something because it's very difficult to do this because as you can see, this machine is very large. So um, I was doing some embroidering of towels and I thought, you know what? I think I'm gonna throw on the YouTube and um, go ahead and do a video for you. So this is um, the Innovis, Innovis, not sure how you say it. I apologize for that. This is the NQ1600E, and the E basically stands for embroidery. So this machine is an embroidery machine only. Some machines have sewing and embroidery, but um, I already have a sewing machine. So I just wanted one for embroidering. Now I do, um, I did have one before this. You may see a few videos on that if you go back and look, but um, that was only a four by four size hoop. This one goes up to a six by 10. So I quickly ended up trading that one in and going with this one. I did a lot of research before I did it. So my recommendation to you, if you're thinking of starting embroidery, is go for what you can afford the largest hoop because when you fall in love with it you're going to want to go back and trade it in and upgrade so to me six by ten was a great size i really wanted five by seven because so many designs are five by seven but this one is perfecto for me um so anyhow um go to a reputable brother dealer as well um don't go buy off of big box stores or whatnot they don't supply any type of training or any information to you once you get it home so um that would also be my recommendation it looks like you guys are sliding down like i said um this is going to be a trial and error but i haven't shown you really anything yet i've been jibber jabbering okay so let me show you a few towels that i've done um, here is one. Isn't that cute? Sorry, the sun is coming through the window. I'm not going to complain about that because it was raining all day. So look at that cute little chicken. Doesn't that look fabulous? And look, this is a big towel. That's a big design. So that's one, um, that I just did. Here's another one. Um, and it says, if heaven doesn't have dogs, I'm not going. So I thought that was super cute. So, and these are dish towels. They're cotton dish towels. Got them off of Amazon. And here is the one that I just did. Oh, it's just so hard to get this into the screen. Um, and this one says, nurses do everything with love. So I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to do another one of these with you because it's not a very long stitch. So um, let me show you the process of doing the whole thing. Now, let me grab a towel. I think I would have had one ready already. You know what I mean? But, hey, this is how things go, right? So these are um, cotton towels. Um, they are 100% cotton, made in India, unfortunately. I got them off of Amazon, a whole pack of them. So the great thing about these is that these are already a little fuzzy on there. They were already folded, so they're showing you the, the line as far as where the center is. I don't know why this thing keeps... Let me try doing that. Okay, so this will fit in a five by seven hoop. So here is a five by seven hoop. Let me move this aside for a bit. So what I wanna do is, before I get started, I have to do a little prep work. So this is stabilizer. Now there's all sorts of different stabilizers on the market. This one is a um, tear stabilizer. They're sticky, there's water soluble. There's all sorts of different stabilizers. This comes on a roll. You can get some of them on the sheet, but depending on if I'm doing four by four, five by seven, six by 10, I like to get the roll. Then I can cut it to the size I want. 
So to do that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my hoop and I'm going to <clears throat> do a rough measure. And just with my scissors, I'm just going to trim. You want to trim it so that it's larger than your hoop so you have a little bit of overhang because once this machine gets going, it's going to start banging and um, pulling on it. So you want to make sure that it's going to be larger than your hoop. So I think you can see that. The next thing you want to do is decide what, um, well, of course, you want to know ahead of time what design you're going to do, which I already know. I want to do the nurses do everything with love. I have a couple friends I want to give these to. So um, what I'm going to do, let me bring up, hmm, well, let's hoop this first. I know that I want the design to go long ways. So just, uh, you have to decide that, which I already know because I've already done one. So I, this is the way that the hoop is going to go into the machine. This is the part that goes into, slides into the machine. So I'm gonna put my stabilizer on there and I want my design to go long ways. So make sure I have the right end of my towel. And um, I know this is difficult to show you, but I will. Okay, best that I can. Okay, so I'm gonna have my stabilizer and I already know where the center is. So I need to hoop this. And um, there's two parts to the hoop. There's the bottom part that goes into the machine. And then this is the top piece. So they have, they have two little markings, top and bottom. I'm going to align that up with my towel. That helps to get it in the center somewhat. Plus this towel has stripes on either side. So that's another um, helpful um, way to get this in. Now I do have a magnetic hoop, which I probably should use because that, you just don't even have to do this. This has a little screw on the end. I'll show you after I tighten this up has a little screw that you're going to tighten up. The magnetic hoop is wonderful in that there's no screwing of the, any bolts. There's two pieces that snap together and all I'm going to say is watch out fingers. Okay, so here's my hoop design. You can see my lines. I have right where the fold of the towel was going up and down and I'm looking at it and eyeball wise looks good to me. So let me bring over the machine and, um, oh dear. Okay. I hope I'm not making you sick by this. It's just a hard way to show. Okay. So there's a little, um, if you could see that. Nope, I gotta go back this way. So there's a little piece here. This is where your design is gonna, your hoop is going to go into. Push it all the way in, and there's a little lever here. You push that down. That's going to lock in your design. Now, because this is a little bit long, I'm just going to kind of roll this up, and that want will be out of my way. I have to move it away from the wall because this arm goes back and forth. Okay, hold on a second here. <laughs> oh dear goodness. Okay, let me zhush this around. Okay, um, so here's my screen. I have a thumb drive in the side here. And if you guys can see that, let me try to move the stand over. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna use a design that's on my thumb drive. There's many designs already built in here, including alphabets and things like that. There's also some designs you can save on your machine if it's something you're going to use over and over again. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to my design. You could see all the different designs. So here's my design that I want and then I'm going to set it. Now up here at the top, it'll show you different hoop sizes. So you can do this in a five by seven or six by 10. So four different hoop sizes. So I have my five by seven. Now, if it didn't fit in there, it will tell you you need a larger hoop, but it fits in there. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna rotate it to go sideways. So, oops, this way. 
Okay, so there it's going sideways. I'm gonna hit okay. So um, I'm pretty much done there. So then if you wanted to move it, you wanted to size it, you want to delete it. If you want to add something else to it, you can go ahead and hit add. You can add someone's name or anything like that. And if I'm done doing the editing, I'm gonna go ahead and hit edit end. Okay, and it brings you to this screen. Now this screen, you will be able to see exactly where it's going to stitch. This little symbol here, which it kind of goes round and round, that will show you the whole stitch area if you hit that. Um, so you can adjust where you want it to go if you wanted to rotate it or move it anywhere to see where it's stitching. So um, let me, hold on a second, let me move you over here. And okay, so I'm gonna hit that button now, this button here that has that square with the arrow and let's see what it does and hit okay so now it's showing me whoops i know you can't see that it's showing me where my stitch area is going to be okay and i look like i'm a little bit off center so we can go back over here click okay and i can move the design by moving the arrows can hit this will take it in the center um i look like i have to go down a little bit in order to have it right in the center and i'm going to go ahead and say okay i'm done with that embroidery so here on the screen it's going to show you your design it's going to show you the different color threads it gives you little numbers so depending on what thread you're using it coordinates with that but this color, whatever number this comes up with, doesn't coordinate with my thread. So to me, it's like red, silver, and black. So here it'll tell you it's nine minutes. This is the stitch count and zero out over five. So there's five different thread changes in order to get the colors, okay? So let me move you back over here and hopefully hook you up here so you don't fall over. Boy, I never thought this was gonna be so hard to do. Okay. And I don't edit my videos, so um, <laughs> you kinda get what you get. All right, I don't even know if I'm gonna post this video because this is like poor quality. Poor quality video. Okay. All right, let me bring this forward. And that's sticking in your way. All right, so the first color it's calling for is red. So I'm gonna go up here, I have my red thread, and I'm gonna go up here, and I'm gonna thread it on the spool, very easy to thread. I have my bobbin in the bottom, which I didn't check, but I just changed it not too long ago. So you just follow all the numbers and go along here. This is hard to do around the camera. And I, then I wonder why people that do these videos have such trouble. So I'm gonna put the foot down. There's a little lever that you push and it should thread your needle. If it doesn't, that means something's not right. Okay, hold on a sec. Let's try it again. There we go. So that threads your needle. I have my foot on here so it doesn't fall down. Okay, so see if we can bring you in a little bit closer. How is that? Oh my goodness. How is that? What are you falling over? Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is green means go. So when you press the button, it's going to start. So here we go. It's going to do that little tiny heart that's in the stethoscope. And it does its own adjusting as far as moving quickly and slowly, quickly. So this will only take one minute. One minute to stitch. And the great thing about this machine is it cuts the thread for you. So it moves and you see how it cut the thread. So now I want to remove this spool and I'm going to have to put a different color on. 
So up here at the top, what you want to do is snip it, take your spool off, and then pull this thread out from the bottom. You never want to pull up from the top because that might um, do, wreak some havoc with your tension. Okay, I'm going to have to let you go for a second while I put on the next color, which is a gray color. So let me get this threaded. Okay. Do, do, oh, that's not right. Under here. There. And around. Oh, my goodness. You always want to put the foot down to thread. Okay, that didn't thread that time. Hold on. Let's see what the problem was. It's probably the angle that I'm at. Okay, we're going to go this way, go there, along the edge. Breaks off. Hmm. All right. Well, let's start over again. Let's cut this from the top because something isn't right. That's one of the great things with this machine is if something's not right, it'll tell you. So let's try this again. Down there, here. And in the beginning, I was a nervous wreck to, um, okay, something's not, the foot has to go up, to do the threading. But I'll tell you, after doing so many projects, um, it gets to be second nature to do it. It's just hard because of the angle that I'm at with the camera in front of me. Okay, hold on a sec. Let me move you back. I'm not at the right angle that I can do it. There we go. Third, fourth time. Not really sure how many that was. Okay, so we changed that. We got a green and we're going to push go. So this piece is going to go around the heart, part of the stethoscope. And this is only going to take a minute as well. The next color is going to be black, and that would be two minutes. <laughs> After all that, now we have to change it again. That's okay. But the screen will indicate and tell you exactly what all's going on. Okay, now my black, I have a big, huge, massive spool. So I have this big spool holder behind me that I purchased. Okay, here we go. Please bear with me. It's so much easier when I do my stamping videos because I do that overhead and you can see everything, right? Okay, there we go. No problem with that one, right? All right, now this is a two-minute stitch. So this is going to do part of the stethoscope. Does a little bit of an outline and then a little bit of a satin stitch over it. You can see, look how fast that's going. I mean, it amazes me, this machine. This is going to be, if I didn't say it, this is a two minute stitch. And you want to always keep this area over here clean, clear because that arm is going to move back and forth depending on where it's stitching. I didn't want to hook this camera holder up to the table because my table really shakes. You guys would have felt like if you were in an earthquake. <laughs> so we don't want that to happen, right? All right, we're working our way down. This is a quick stitch though, nine minutes. I've done ones where they were 45 minutes, I'll tell you. But it to me, it's just relaxing to do this. You know, just watching the machine do its thing amazing to me actually and it does show you on the screen I'm not going to flip you over to that but it does show you on the screen exactly where it's stitching there's a little cross green cross hairs that show you exactly where it's stitching look at that black just really makes a difference 
difference. It went around the heart. Okay, so that's done. It's gonna cut the thread and move out of the way. So look at that so far. Can you see that? How beautiful that is. Okay, let me put you back. We're gonna cut this thread because now we're gonna go back to the gray color again. And that's gonna be one minute. Let me thread this up. Now this is a single needle machine. There are machines, whoop, hit that. There are machines that have multiple needles. So that, this is where that would come in handy because you can have all the needles ahead of time threaded with all the different colors and you don't have to stop in between. I'm missing the side there. You don't have to stop in between to change the needle color. So I'll put the foot down. Oh, this is gonna give me trouble again. I can see this. So that way, it saves you a lot of time by not having to go through this step. There we go. Okay. All right, let's go back. Green means go. So this is going to do the top of the stethoscope. And like I said, this is a one minute stitch. And then the next thing all we do is the wording, which that's going to be a seven minute stitch. So, um, I don't think I'm going to have you sit here for seven minutes and watch, but um, I'm not really sure how to pause and pick up the video again. Kind of new to doing it this way. I usually upload Facebook Lives and just do straight videos, so um, I'm a little bit more of an amateur when it comes to doing videos like this. Okay, so that's done. Look at that. Can you see the stitch on that? Oh, how nice that looks. So even if you wanted to, um, let me bring you back down again. If you were doing a project and you just wanted this little stethoscope on there, you could actually go into the program on your edit screen and only do partial um, parts of the um, embroidery design. Okay. So next, we're bringing the red back in again, and then, like I said, this is going to be, this red was giving me trouble before coming off the spool. I think it's because of this sticker on here is coming off, so let me move that off. Oops, sorry. Well, I'm definitely not going to get five stars for my video technique, that's for sure. But I hope you can follow along and just see how easy it really is. Oh, let's thread that needle. Green to go. How easy it really is. Um, the embroidery machine does all the work. Now this is the seven minute stitch and it's going to do all the words. And then after that, all you have to do is this will cut all your jump stitches. There may be one or two depending on the designer as to how they designed the, the whole um, the whole setup that they don't they didn't put in to cut a certain jump stitch here or there and the jump stitch is actually from going from one letter to the next it should just flow really nicely depending on how they designed it but sometimes between the next word you know you may have just a little thread that kind of pulls over and you just go in with your scissors and just trim that that's not a problem but it does not trim the back so you have to trim off the loose ones that are hanging from the back and just basically peel that paper away once you unhoop it and then when you're done you're going to end up with a design like this and all you have to do is take a light warm iron i didn't iron these yet you want to be careful so that you don't melt the thread because if your iron is too hot you can so go ahead and put a piece of um, parchment paper or some sort of paper over top of the design to protect it while you iron it but um, let's take a look at how it's doing almost done with the first word which is nurses okay now it's moved over see that little I don't know if you can see that little jump stitch that I will have to trim with my scissors. So I do recommend a pair of scissors like this. 
these have a curved tip to them so you can get in there and trim those jump stitches very easily so we're doing the word do but I just love this I I find it relaxing a lot of times um, here in my uh, craft room which is actually a spare bedroom I have two long tables I bought them from HSN they're really nice tables they're made by origami and I have them next to each other so a lot of times while the stitching is going on I'm on the other table doing some stamping and I just kind of babysit it keep an eye on it because sometimes you may have issues where like a needle might break or the thread may break and the machine will stop and it will come up on the screen to tell you exactly what is wrong or, and to check. Sometimes you get little, they call it thread nests underneath where the bobbin is, bobbin is and you may have to go under there. Um, I like to use a coin. I actually keep a coin right in the top where my thread is. And if you notice on my thread, I don't use the cap on there. I found the cap gave me a lot of trouble. So I just basically put the spool on there and the spool just kind of pulls out nicely. And um, that's what works for me. So, I mean, you have to find your niche, what works for you. So let's see, we have, oh, about 3,000 more stitches to go. It's amazing to think that there's over 7,000 stitches. I don't know about you guys, but there's no way I could possibly ever do this myself if I was having to do the stitching part. I used to do cross stitch and embroidery and plastic canvas. How many of you remember that? And um, ended up getting carpal tunnel, so had to have surgery for that. And we're talking, oh, about 22 years ago I had that done. I also do transcription for a living, so I'm sure that, you know, didn't help with the situation. But after all that, I kind of stopped doing all that and kind of got into sewing and paper crafts. And um, I always wanted an embroidery machine. I always thought it was so cool. I have two grandchildren and I always thought it'd be so fun to be able to make things for them and put their names on things. So I've done t-shirts and bags and um, a lot of little key fobs, which are like keychains. Um, the sky's the limit what you can do. Now there's a whole other part of machine embroidery, which is called digitizing. And that's taking a picture of something and making the whole program to, to do on the machines. So I'm not interested in learning that right now. Um, so I purchase or I get free the designs that I have to get the zip drive. Okay, now we're done with that. We might as well just hang out because we're almost done here. I could show you the end. So nurses do everything. So we only have with love to finish. So um, I purchase designs. There's a lot of places you can purchase designs. A lot of them I get from Etsy. There's a lot of embroidery um, Juju Designs is another one. Um, embroidery, uh, what is the one that I got this one from? There's a lot that they offer free designs, so you can check them out on Facebook or just do a Google search for machine embroidery designs. And you'd be amazed at how many there are. There's all sorts of little purses you can do. Um, they call in the hoop projects where everything is basically done inside the hoop including putting zippers on and everything. So it's just, there's just so much to it that um, you can do. Now I did, um, during this COVID-19 crisis, I was making embroidered masks for kids with faces on and they were all free downloads, like shark, shark mouths and, um, oh, all sorts of fun, a like dog and cat and bear and all sorts of fun things. The only thing with those is when you're doing embroidery, just think that needle is stitching through that fabric, putting little tiny holes in it. So you kind of want to do, um, make the mask, it does it all in the hoop, 
and then put your backing on. So you don't want to really stitch through the entire design front and back because it's not really protecting you from any virus. You know, well, not that the regular masks are either, mind you, but um, just something to consider when you're embroidering. And you can pretty much embroider anything. Um, you know, just as long as your needle will go through it, you know. Okay, we are almost done. We got about 30 more stitches to go. So there it is, it's gonna end that. Where are we at? We're at a half a, woo! Brought it real up close and personal. Okay, I'm gonna have to let you go here so I can, um, I don't want it to fall though. So we're gonna go ahead, I'll use one hand. We're gonna un latch that so here over on the screen i don't know if you can see that it says finished embroidering so you can hit okay brings back up to where you were if you want to go back to your original screen if you're done with this you can just go back 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 okay to cancel the current pattern selection okay and it brings you back to your main screen okay so over here we're going to slide our hoop out and now I think I can move my sheet machine back a little bit. Bring you down to the desk. So here it is. Here is our design. Look at how beautiful that did. There's a couple little jump stitches. Let me bring you down here. So all I'm going to do with that is just going to take my little scissors and I'm going to snip those jump stitches. It looks like we only have two. Trim them. So let's take a look at the back. Now here's the back. You can see that there are stitches on the back, so you will have to trim those. But let's unhoop it, see what we got. Oops. I'm holding it with one knee. I mean, if you, if anybody were here to see, see this whole setup here, you would be like, oh my goodness, honey. Okay. So here's our stabilizer on the back. We're just going to tear this away because this is a tear away stabilizer. Okay. So here, let me bring this so you can see. We have a couple pieces that didn't tear, so you can just go ahead gently and, and pull them out. There's in the area of the stethoscope, we want to pull that out. There's another piece in here. And it comes out real easy. So you can see all those little stitches. You'll go in with your scissors and fix those. And then let's flip it over. And there we are. You want to go ahead with a warm iron. Like I said, cover it over and um, iron that to um, <clears throat> make that a little less wrinkly if you choose. And there you go. It's as easy as that. So I hope you stuck with me for the whole video and I apologize for my video skills. I'm hoping if I do more videos of embroidery that I get a different type of setup. So this one wasn't the best. But anyhow, that is my um, brother, Inovus NQ1600 machine that I own currently. I love it. I would highly recommend it. Um, very easy to use. There is a whole book. There is videos on YouTube you can watch. Do your research before you dive in. And um, yeah, it's it's great. There's a lot of great Facebook groups I belong to that they're very helpful when things have come up that um, I've had questions on. And um, it's, it's a great, it's fun. It's a great fun um, hobby. Or, you know, I, I have made a lot of things that I have sold to people. So, um, you can make some income. You're not going to end up being um, a millionaire, but you can do a hobby and turn it into a business. Everybody loves monogrammed and embroidered things. I know my two grandsons have names that, you know, Preston and Travis that aren't really things you find off the rack, like my name, Susan. I mean, you can find that everywhere, but you can really make some great gifts too. So thank you so much for joining me, putting up with my not so great video skills and um if you're still there thanks for watching to the end and be sure to subscribe like and hopefully leave me a nice comment so thanks everyone i hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you back here again real soon bye for now